Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of the book of Titus today, the letter Paul to Titus. And uh, we're going to be uh, getting into the text. We're going to be reading chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, which is the um, the greeting, the salutation, the hello, which, as we have reiterated these last five years of Bible study together on five good minutes, are not to be read over too quickly because every hello and every goodbye is just packed full of meaning, uh, especially in Paul's letters. So we're going to read verses one through four. Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the faith of those who have chosen, for faith of those chosen of God and the knowledge of the truth, which is according to godliness and the hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised long ages ago but at the proper at the proper time manifested his word in the proclamation with which i was entrusted according to the commandment of god our savior to titus my true child in a common faith grace and peace from god the father and christ jesus our savior okay this sounds kind of straightforward maybe a little wordier um than 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 the 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 salutations in Timothy, but also a little less a little less warm. Um, we've talked about the difference in relationship, and I think we see that manifested here as well. It is a paternal epistle. Titus is my true child in a common faith. The only other person he describes as a true child, a blood relative, a true child, is Timothy himself. And so th these two young men um, have unique relationships with the Apostle Paul. But we have or characterized, or I have, the last couple of sessions. Titus is someone who was sent to the hardest places to go and, 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 and who does not need Paul to buck him up before he can get out there and get the job done. And just from the way Paul describes him, uh, in in Second Corinthians chapter eight verse twenty six that we read yesterday, and the way he describes him here and talks to him here, I just think that we that, that Paul, even though he's Paul's son, Paul um, instructs him um, not as someone who needs a lot of raising, but as someone he considers a full grown adult, someone he can talk to as a peer, as a colleague. Okay. Paul, a bondservant of God. How many times does Paul describe himself as a bondservant? A lot. How many times does he describe himself as a bondservant of God? Once, and it's here. It's always a bondservant of Jesus Christ. But he calls himself a bondservant of God here. He identifies himself two ways, as a bondservant and an apostle. There are couplets in, in, the, in these four verses and and three of these couplets uh, ought to be trios, but one one of the of the three is missing. So we have Father, God the Father. We also have Son because uh, Christ Jesus our Savior, um, um, from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. Verse four. So we have God. We have the Father. We have the Son. But in the greeting, we don't have the Holy Spirit. We also have grace and peace, which is what he generally says in his um, epistles to churches. But in his epistles to Timothy, these personal letters, he says grace, mercy, and peace. And here we have grace and peace without mercy. Now, your King James will have mercy because in some of the, 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 the later uh, manuscripts, mercy is there. But it's much more likely to have been added later. And taken out earlier there is no mercy we also have faith verse one and hope verse two and what's the third in the pattern faith hope and love agape love and we don't have it here so we have father son no spirit and we have grace and peace no mercy and we have faith and hope no love now mercy and the holy spirit are going to make their appearance in the letter but agape will not. We, we mentioned this in our 
in our first session that agape is not in any form is not found in this letter, which is a great, a great puzzle. Especially since we know that one of his main works was with what congregation? The church in Corinth. And in what letter did Paul write? If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels and have no love, it profits me nothing. Now abide faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. First Corinthians chapter 13. It just adds to the adds to the puzzlement of it all. Okay, Paul, we see something about how how he thinks of himself. In the same way David always saw himself as a child or as a lamb, Paul sees himself as a as a servant, as a servant and an apostle. He's, he, he is on task, and he has a master, and he's going to be obedient to that master. Uh, and as a, 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 an apprentice, and then as a, an apprentice rabbi, and I'm sure that that's exactly how he would think of himself um, in terms of his relationship with God. He emphasizes the role of knowledge, as Peter does in First Peter chapter 1. It's knowledge. Knowledge is of the truth is the thing that will lead to our godliness. We have faith in God through the knowledge of the truth. He talks about the proper time. Um, interesting. Uh, Timothy is mentioned in Galatians, and it is in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, that the phrase fullness of time is used for the first time in, in the New Testament. And 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 he's talking about the fullness of of time of, of, of time here that at the perfect time god who had been arranging things for this moment gave them gave us gave us all salvation through jesus christ and gave us a message of good news to share and and so that is what he says in his introduction in, in a way reminding titus to stay on point we're going to learn in the next few verses that the Cretan work is so hard, every bit as hard as what he'd had in Corinth, and 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 frequently discouraging. And Paul just tells him, "Listen, this is about the history of the world. This is about cosmic forces God has been managing since since t the beginning of time, and and we're part of it. I'm part of it, and you're part of it. This work that we do is necessary. It's important." And it's God's work, uh, and he and then he emphasizes in verse four their common faith, their commonality. You and I, we know the same truth. We believe the same truth, and we are sharing the same truth. So we're connected by by that truth. Okay, we're going to pick up with verse five next time and read through verse nine. Paul is immediately going to get to the topic of elders. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.